Are we ready to go? Yes. Awesome. So, uh, first order of business, we are here today to learn about, and the flyer that went out said Alzheimer's from the patient's perspective. So if you are up on the panel here and you don't have Alzheimer's, don't worry about that. We're, what we're really saying is memory issues from the patient's perspective. So I hope everyone up here has some kind of memory issue. That you're, that you're to talk about. Yes, I am. She can't remember. <laughs> so, so obviously you all have a good sense of humor, and that's really important to get through the disease. Um, so if we could, right at the beginning, you know, everyone else in the room are, are caregivers. If we could give these guys up here a big round of applause for being so crazy. Okay, so um, I know it's going to be kind of a little bit hard to see everyone, but you know, we're, we're um, constrained by our space, so we'll do the best we can. So we'll kick things off. Um, Frank, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Frank Shimamoto, and uh, I've been diagnosed with not Alzheimer's, but with memory loss. That's, that's my condition as far as I know. So that's where I am. I don't know why I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Uh, Dave? Uh, I'm Dave Kramer, and uh, I think I'm the only one here uh, with early onset Alzheimer's disease. So I'm a, a, a little bit younger as a result, and uh, happy to. Sh I'm an open book. I'm happy to share anything that I'm asked regarding what's going on with me. Awesome, Jack. Hi, uh, my name is Jack Tracy. I'm from Nourishville, New York. I'm a retired physician, and uh, I'm definitely not an open book, but I'll try to be a little more open. <laughs> <laughs> John, good morning. I'm John Foley. I've uh, I have dementia. I have had multiple mini strokes, which really led to dementia. And from dementia comes a high probability of Alzheimer's. And I accept the fact that I have it. I am playing the cards that I have been delivered, and I'll play them until the lights go out. And that's what all of us need to do. I accept what I have, and I accept what I'm going to get. In other words, as time progresses, I know where I'm going. Uh, I have to thank Clark very much for having a, a person do a presentation over at the church for us one week. And she showed me me on the tape there. It wasn't me, but it was exactly the way I have been and what's happening to me as time goes on. And But I'm fully prepared to go with the flow. And I'm very fortunate to have my wife as my caregiver, Mary Ann. <laughs> and she takes wonderful care of me. She makes sure that I attend certain things, <laughs> such as the gentlemen's luncheons on Friday, et cetera, et cetera, and I enjoy that. And I have my friend Wayne the Brain here, who I pick on unmercifully. <laughs> he's my pal. I pick on him every chance I get, but he gives it right back to me, and I love it. <laughs> so any questions you have, I have nothing to hide. Excellent. Thank you, John. Thank you. And then uh, finally, we have Pat here yes. today. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Pat. Um, well, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you for being that representation. <laughs> uh, I was a social worker in children and family services for many years. More? Just sure. Kids. Just kids. Huh? Oh, I have grandchildren and children. I have two. I have um, Diana, Michael. Uh, I just say what happens. I go. So I have grandchildren and I have a daughter and a son. And I have two sons. Two sons. Yeah. 
So, so maybe, and we'll, we'll try to get to everyone's questions, so we'll start early with questions because I want you guys to, to feel free, but also any kind of statements any of you guys want to address what our caregivers should know, what would be helpful for them to know, please speak up and, and say whatever you have to say. But I want to start with you, Pat, on that, that one thought where you were starting to say about the grandkids, you said, see, that's what happens, I lose it. Yeah. Can you just All the time. describe what that's like for you? I honestly don't know what it feels like because I'm not aware it's happening. It's just like I skip over it and then I can't remember that I said it and then I go back and some people like this lovely lady help me get it back. But I'm not aware that I'm doing it. Is it frustrating for you or no? No, it's terribly frustrating. Yeah, because I was, I was very good in business and all the things I did and one day I wake up and this is going on. How about any of you else on the panel here about where you're, you're thinking of a thought, you're trying to go through it, and then you kind of lose it? Lose it, yeah. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Jack, what's that like for you? Describe that for us. Well, I'm angry. I'm angry because of Why me? Why did I do this? Uh, it's, it's very frustrating. I think one of the hardest things is I used to be kind of an avid reader. And I'll get a book now, and I'll start the book, and I'll go back the second day, uh, and maybe I've got, you know, 12, 13, 14 pages cut off, and uh, I open the book, I have no idea what I read the day before. It's all gone, and I really can't read a book. If I could read the whole book in one day, maybe that would work back. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? And I also have a wonderful <coughs> wife who's the best caregiver around. It's a little nasty sometimes, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Have you changed the type of reading material? Well, I, I suppose I had to go back to comic books, but no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of pictures I should have. But you're, you're not, you're reading novels, not medical journals. I'm, I'm, no, I actually do still read the medical, I do better with the medical journals than I do with the novels. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I miss, I miss the reading. I just keep thinking that it'll come back for the good spring. How do you, how do you deal with that? The, that kind of thought, it makes you angry. Frustrated. Yeah, that's about all. I mean, I don't throw things at the ground or anything. <laughs> yeah. Dave, how about yourself? Huh? Uh, it, <clears throat> I think that uh, difficulty reading, just to continue on that, is very, very common. Um, for me, uh, the same kind of thing happens, though I don't think to the degree that Jack was describing. Um, but for me, I find that uh, the technology helps a lot. So uh, using a Kindle or a Kindle app on my iPad um, and uh, a wonderful function called X-Ray on it, uh, I can go back and see what the characters are doing very easily and <laughs> remind myself of where I am when I'm reading. So I think that it's a uh, terrific technology for those of us who really do enjoy it. And I still read novels, but I always, every evening when I pick it up again, need to go back and refresh my memory a little bit. But the other thing that I find really helpful is uh, I've taken toward reading uh, series that have characters that uh, certain um, writers use time and time again. So I get familiar with those characters, and that way I feel like I'm back in familiar territory even when I pick up a different story involving uh, the same ones. So that's really helpful to me. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out to Jack his mistake in saying that he has the best caregiver. <laughs> <laughs> Clear, clearly I do. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. That's right. Well, trying to make points, right? I think so. <laughs> I've learned a lot over the years about that. <laughs>